What's up? What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing, man? What's good, man? I'm happy to see everybody tuning in. I'm happy that we're getting serious. I heard the conversation about the, the sit-ups and the crunches and the push-ups and healthy eating. The best thing is, is, is it's not just doing it as a challenge. We're actually making lifestyle changes. And with this COVID-19 thing, we're realizing how much healthy um, lifestyle really means to us and what it could really do. And the best part is we're talking about um, nutritious and delicious. So as you can see with the spread that we got here, you know what I mean? Give them a look at nice little spread we got. We're actually going to talk about some healthier ways to make some of our favorite dishes. I'm going to jump right in. We're going to be talking today. It's ha Haitian Heritage Month. And um, if you don't know that, so we're talking about a Creole poulon sauce, which is basically um, stewed chicken. And we're going to show you how to really get down and dirty. And uh, you should have a lot of the ingredients that we already um, sent out to you. Jeff, I hope you already sent it out and everybody has their ingredients ready to rock and roll. You know what I mean? Because we don't have a lot of time. Um, we're not here for a long time, but a good time. You know what I'm saying? So let's get ready to rock and roll. Is everybody ready? Yep. I'm ready. Uh, super excited. And, uh, you know, take it slow on me, man, because, uh, you know, I'm, uh, my uh, cooking is, so I burn water, right? You know what I mean? So, uh, oh, please, man, you know, so I'm super excited about today, man, you know? So I'm going to make sure I speed it up purposely, just as you said, that's like, no, but we do only have a couple of, you know, we have less than an hour, man. So we really want to get this right. One of the things that I do want to say is um, always start with clean cutting board. Knife, you want to have all your um, mise en place, which means in French culinary terms, everything ready and in its place. So what that does is it allows you to be ready to just grab things and go. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple of seconds while I give you a little bit of history about my company and what we do to get everything ready and in its place. Almost like you see me here, every single ingredient, pull it out. Don't be trying to run into the refrigerator to get one thing or another. Everything should be out and ready to rock and roll. So that way we can follow and really, it shortens the amount of time because you're not going in the fridge because you need each and every thing. Um, Chef Claudie Pierre, I have eight siblings. Sammy is my twin brother. Um, I have hair. He doesn't. It's all good. I love him to death. Um, but he has the personality and the charm, and I'm just a chef. You know how that goes. You know what I mean? Um, so love you. Shout out to Sammy. Shout out to HAC. Shout out to Groom Success and the Gentleman's Factory. I can't thank you enough, man. I can't wait till we scale it and we bring Room fa um, Gentleman's Factory to Pittsburgh. Um, but we are here with the EAT initiative, EAT, Empowerment, Awareness, and Training. We are literally teaching people how to live a healthy lifestyle, how to procure food, how to prepare food, and how to train yourself and others to live a healthier lifestyle. We're using all fresh ingredients. And our main component of our company is we believe that fresh produce should be a human right. Almost like you have access to water. Everyone, you know, we have laws that say you have to have access to fresh water. We believe that everyone should have fresh um, access to fresh fruits and vegetables and fresh produce. Um, so today we're gonna get jump start you. What I did is my uh, my recipe is a grandmother's recipe, my mom's recipe. We all have had it before, and now I'm gonna simplify it and make it easy for you guys to jump in. So follow me, okay? There's a couple of things that if you do want to substitute, you're more than welcome to. It's not like, um, you know, we're going to, you guys are trained chefs. You know what I mean? So there's some things that you may, if you didn't get a scotch bonnet pepper in the, uh, in the actual recipe, I got some jalapenos here that still have some kick and a lot of flavor. So, you know what I mean? We're looking towards doing that. Um, now, what I want to do is, first things first, I want to talk to you about marinating the chicken. So with the list of ingredients that you have, you see that there's peppers, there's onions. This is what we call a green onion. You see that they call for lemon or lime. Um, they call for the pepper, like I said, the hot peppers um, and fresh garlic. What you're gonna do is you're gonna actually take it. So take your onion, you wanna chop it down a little bit. Always create a flat surface. Your feet and your shoulders should be shoulder width apart. You hold your knife like this. If you're holding your knife like this with your finger like this, you're 1,000% wrong. So scratch that right now. If you're holding your knife like this, you're 1 million percent wrong, okay? You pinch your index finger and your thumb. You pinch the bottom of the blade like this. 
you wrap your fingers around, and then you have full control. Everything in the kitchen is about control. Every single thing, controlling your water, controlling the temperature of the heat, controlling your own body language. So this is a great moment for you to grab a glass of wine, because we, we even put some in the food sometimes, but grab a glass of wine and really loosen up because this is gonna be a fun situation, not frustrating, okay? Fun, not frustrating. Now, I grab my onion. A lot of times we want the whole circle. This time we're gonna actually add it into what we're calling the it piece. It piece is a marinade that we make. It's almost like a, it's almost like a, a, a cure-all. You can put it on fish, on chicken, you could put it in anything. And it piece is the blend of spices and herbs that now allows you to take a, you, you literally are gonna make it taste finger licking good, make you wanna slap somebody. Not really, you don't wanna slap nobody. But this is what the difference is instead of using salt and pepper, you know what I mean, on everything. You can use it on steak, chicken, fish, the whole nine yards. I take my onion and what I'm doing is I just cut it right down the middle. Only reason I did that is because I wanna get the skin off fast. So I cut the little nubs off each side like that. And now this skin peels right away. The thing about an onion is everybody says, well, what's the secret to making, to, to you not crying? Um, should I run it under cold water? Should I do this or do that? The number one secret, there's many different ways people think, is to just have a really sharp knife. Your knife should be very, very sharp, like wicked sharp, like a cut paper. You know why? Because then you have less of an effort and you're not, all those little capsules of onion juice are not bursting every time you cut it. When you have a hammer, that's the easiest way to cut your fingers off. And like I said, remember, you hold it, you pinch the bottom, you wrap it around like this, you make a claw with this hand, and you never pass those fingers. You don't lay your fingers like this because you could chop them off. And I've done it before, I chopped off a piece of my thumb, it wasn't pretty. All right, so you claw like this, you grab your onion, and then you go right, through it. Look at how thin and how beautiful and how nice that is. You guys see that? Look at this. Nice and beautiful thin slices. Give it another coarse chop. Same thing over here. Voila. You see that? I'm making my... And tuck your thumb behind too, guys. You're feeding that onion through. All right. So now we're gonna do the same thing with the rest of our ingredients. I'm grabbing my garlic nets. I like to wipe off my cutting board as often as I can. You, I mean, you're at home, so you're not in a professional kitchen, but I like to just give it a quick wipe. You know what I mean? As I change products. I'm gonna grab my garlic. With my fresh garlic cloves, it should be already peeled. If not, you're gonna take a couple of seconds to peel it, okay? I like to give it with the flat side of the knife like this. Ah, give it a nice little, it sounds like a back is cracking, you know? And then you just chop it up. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna throw it in the food processor. Now, if you don't have a blender or a food processor or a pilon, I don't know if everybody knows what a pilon is. It's the Haitian um, or island Caribbean thing. You put it all in and it's wooden and you mash it all up. You could just put it directly on your chicken and marinate it as well. That's the key. I mean, you wanna put it on there. We're gonna blend it because we absolutely love to make sure it penetrates inside of it. And we also like when it actually, um, it takes a couple of days maybe overnight, maybe a couple of hours, I should say. Um, take your pepper. You're gonna use almost this whole pepper. You see those beautiful seeds? I love them. I'm actually gonna keep the seeds in and we're cutting those peppers nice and beautifully. You see that? The only part of the pepper I is the little stem. That's all going in my marination process, okay? That's really gonna give it the pop and the flavors that you wanna see. And you can smell it right now that it's coming together really lovely. So as we're chopping this together, one of the things that I love is the fact that in the Haitian community, we love, or, or a lot of the island communities, we love our herbs and we love our spices. Instead of you going to the store and getting that dollar, um, from the dollar store getting the, the granulated garlic or the garlic powder and the onion powder, 
we love fresh onion and we love fresh garlic. I don't care what nobody says, we love that stuff. And not to mention, it can't be the same when it's been in your cabinet for over 10 years. You bought it for a dollar. It's been in your cabinet for over 10 years and you're still using that same dried up onion powder and garlic powder. Come on, guys. We got to do better than that, y'all. We, we try to eat healthy here. You know what I mean? Then I'm going to take parsley. No, I'm going to take my green onion first. We're going to grab some of the green onion like this. We're going to get the little nub off like that. And then we're just going to go right into it. You see that? This is the longest part of the cooking, y'all, is prepping everything. And the best thing about it is, especially with COVID-19 and all the things that we've been experiencing, what we want to do right now is invite the family, invite wifey. If you're trying to impress her, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, graduation season. It's, it's all types of season. You're trying to do something special for the kids wifey anniversary season. This is a perfect way to really get you some cool points, if you know what I mean. This gets you the points that you need. You feel me? Um, then I'm going to take, take some of my, ooh, yeah. You got to get a lot of parsley. We call it pessy. You got to get all the pessy, nice and rinsed and washed already. You put it all together. You could throw the stems in and everything, man. It, that's the more the, the better. You know what I mean? We're going to get a big bunch right now, okay? And you're just going to coarse chop it. You see that? you coarse chopping that. And we're going to, oh, this is so good. I'm going to coarse chop it. And like I said, if you want to just put it on, you can just put it on your meat. If not, put it in the blender. If you don't want to put it in the blender, you could definitely um, just uh, put it in a food processor. But uh, get, the, get the orange or lime. If you have lemon or lime. Get it squeezed in right now. Mm-hmm. Get all that. That's going to wake it right up. All right? And then come with me. I'm going to show you something. This is when we start to put everything together, y'all. Oh, my gosh. Jeff, I hope I'm not going too fast for you, bro. I hope you uh, – I hope – I hope Bro, I was keeping up. You done lost me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no it's helping me out right now. You know what I mean? I mean, wait, just yeah. um, um so, just to you ask everyone else, I mean, oh, just to ask everyone else that's on the chat box, like how are you guys making out? You know, Not, like if you, yo, if you could just go back just a little bit. So <laughs> <and it's, laughs> you you was talking to like <laughs> Yeah. I'm yeah. still cutting I'm all my parsley. Of... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm going to be blending so you guys can catch up right now. I got a little bit of mixes. What I like to do is I like to make my own blends, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, things of that nature. And I like to blend it up in the mix before so it could be well balanced. And then anytime you sprinkle, you sprinkle nice and light like snow. I'll show you when I'm doing the chicken again. But right now, I'm just going to throw a little bit of each one in into my... Uh, marinade into my ippies. Make sure you say it while you're doing it because that's what makes it taste better. You got to say it, ippies. You know what I mean? It's like summoning our ancestors and making sure that they understand that we, 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 we heard them. You're going to add a little bit of your lemon juice. Mm-hmm. Voila. And now we're going to give it a go. Hey, yo. Uh, this is how you make it. This is how you make it sing. You hear me? This is how you do it. Man. That right there is different, different. That right there hit different. Yo, boss, can you just name everything that's in there? <laughs> What's up, bro? Can you just name everything that's in there? I just want to make sure that's everything. <laughs> I got um, I got parsley. I got right. pepper. I use jalapenos instead of scotch bonnet. Um, I have uh, lemon or lime juice. I have okay. scallions, which is green onion. I have um, onion. I don't got uh, regular onion as well. Okay. Salt, pepper. I put fresh garlic. 
and it's all blended together. There's other things you can add, but this is a this is a nice standard blend and a nice standard mix. Take a look. Oh my god, it smells so good, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I could drink it like this. You see that, bro? That's beautiful. And bro, this is how you do it. You take it over here. Look at this. You see a chicken? You put it on it, bro. Like that. And then now you just rub it all in. You got to rub that in the chicken and really allow it to just penetrate inside of it. Your whole refrigerator is going to smell like peppers and onions, but it's all good because that's what you want your refrigerator to smell like. If you want to zoom in here, I also have some fresh thyme and basil and sage. You can always add this to your, your uh, hippies. Please. Your fresh thyme, your basil, your sage. And I grow it right on the windowsill. Look at, like, this is, this is, you know, right from the crib. We just literally have it together. And um, I pick it right directly off of it like this. Take a couple of leaves and it keeps growing. You know what I mean? As long as you take care of it, it keeps growing. All right, guys. How y'all doing over there? Y'all good? Because we're going to go right to the browning method right away. Uh, I mean, you know, just uh, turn it in. pray for me, guys. <laughs> no, that's not fair. You got, you got the wife, though, bro. No, you see, thank God. Mine isn't being recorded, but Chloe. <laughs> Uh, all right so as you guys way. see yo so the best part about this is we're going to be able to include the kids and the wife and the family as as you do it more often you're not going to get it on the first try and that's the best part you put the tablets down you pull up the recipe on one device and everybody you get the onions you chop this you chop that everybody learns how to hold it and you can do it with the family or if you're trying to impress a hot date Listen, if you want those points, you're going to do this right here. And it's nice and easy. And then I usually accompany it with some white rice, some du coulé à pois, some rice and beans, rice and peas, or some nice macaroni au gratin. Like, you already know, like, that's how it's a wrap. You know what I mean? But I want to pan in on the chicken right now, and then I'm going to continue to go over it. So you got about 60 seconds before I start to move, over, move forward. Okay, guys? Jeff, you didn't tell me it was advanced cooking. Just a reminder, guys, there is a chat box. Feel free to share your progress down there. It's at the bottom of your screen. Now, Chef, how are you guys making out? Well, I'm good. You ready? Well, I'm ready to move forward now. So Hold on, I, before, you, before you move on. Um, <laughs> So you supposed to put oil Talks in the when you blend in it. What you supposed to put in? You supposed to put oil. No, you just put all that together. You blend it and then you use the extra virgin olive oil. Oh, okay, just to perfect. loosen it up, not too much. All right, perfect. If you're not blending it, you could just put it all in the oil together and then marinate the chicken with it. Everybody okay. doesn't necessarily have a blender. You know what I mean? Okay. And that's okay. So as you guys can hear, I want you guys to start getting your pan out, getting ready to rock and roll. Oh no, whoa. Get that pan out. Yeah. yeah. But I have to get him on so that we know that's all 
All right, guys, I'm going to start making my way over to the to the oven. Guys, I hope what I did is now I got my oven ready, I got my fire on. And I'm gonna let my pan get a little hot. I prefer to use like a cast iron skillet or even a shoja. And um, I'm gonna run and grab my ingredients. I'm gonna bring it right over, okay? How we feeling, y'all? This is the point where you take another sip of wine real quick, all right? All right, everybody should be caught up by now. All right, is it okay to move forward? We got to go. Crickets. It's quiet over there. All right. Yeah, I so think I'm going up. Yeah. Pin, all right, cool. So with the tomato paste, I want you guys to have a little bit of water nearby as well. Okay? Because the tomato paste, paste is very, very thick. And I'm going to show you why in a little bit. Why it's important, you could mix it together a little bit of tomato paste with the with the Ooh. actual water so that it's not super duper thick. Because when we add it to the hot pan and the chicken, we really, really want we want to have a nice effect. We don't want it to be we don't want it to get too burnt. Okay. You guys ready? You guys got your fans ready? How much water should we have? About a cup. One cup. You guys ready? Ready. This is the last couple of steps, so we should be all right. Again. Now, those of us who are already ready, cut another onion, another pepper, and what I want you to do is, I want you to make the garnish, okay? So you're literally gonna cut the onion the same way, put it to the side, and then cut the onion, cut a little bit of, of pepper, and then cut some garlic, even some tomatoes, and put it to the side. Can you put the camera back on you? Oh, 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 I get it. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> All right, guys, look. Now that your pan is nice and hot, you ready for me, guys? Let me turn on the lights a little bit. You guys got your pans ready? You yep. trying to slow down, Jeff, but I'm, you know, we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm a man on the time. <laughs> well, we're going to run out of time, so you're going to look down, and you're going to be like, oh, snap. You know what I mean? So now your chicken is nice and marinated, right? Line the pan with it just a little bit just so it doesn't stick too bad. A little bit of a blender, blended oil. And it should be nice and hot, y'all. And listen to this, it's gonna make like a thundering roar, thundering applause. Yay! 
And remember that the Haitian way we knit quiet the chicken. So as you before you did this, the chicken should have been knit quiet and clean. What does Nithwaya mean? <laughs> <laughs> For the is so the, so the, the whole translation. process of preparing the chicken is not just cleaning the chicken. Like you got shodeng, <laughs> shodeng, which is like literally you you're po- you're part cooking the chicken. You have nithwaya, which is like you use sour orange, salt, pepper, vinegar. And move the so, chicken around, y'all. Move so the, the Ameri- chicken around. So the American way of saying that it's marinating. Marinating, but not just marinating. You gotta really, literally, you need to literally rinse the chicken off, but then you almost park cook it. You get all that additional extra fat off of it. Believe it or not, that's not always good to take all the fat off because you need the different uh you need you need some of the fat to really give it the juiciness and the flavorful. Okay. You know what I mean? So you don't want to take all the fat off, but they are they are OCD. If you if my mom catches me not doing that, she won't eat. You know what I mean? That's the funniest thing. Now you let it come to a nice. Oh my gosh! Let me tell you something. If you smell this right now, it smells amazing. All right. You should get that nice smell. It's all on the first side right now. Medium high heat. Medium high heat. And you're gonna move it around. It's not gonna stay on one, it's not gonna stay in one position for a while because you don't want it to burn. You know, and there's a lot of things in there that could burn, right? Because remember, we cut up garlic, we cut up this and that and this and that. So you want to move it around so it doesn't burn. Now you see it's starting to get a nice browning, a nice brown color. You see that? Turn each piece, guys. Don't be shy, move it around. This is not when you take another sip of wine, not because uh, this will go fast. If you don't be careful, it will burn fast. Now, you take your mixture of, of pot tomat or tomato paste, and now you start to add a little bit of it. Now, this is, this is you, you, they say it's giving it color. Who buys them the kulel? What's up, Ivy? No cooler. What's up, Dula? This is giving it color. You're starting to see it brown. That tomato product will start to brown it real nice. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you want to keep it moving. You don't want it to be in one spot for too long. And this is without breaking your chicken up, okay? And if you feel like it's too high. It's too high. You still want it to be medium high heat though. All right, guys? When it gets, when it almost seems like all the liquid is gone, you want to touch it up with a little bit of broth or a little bit of water. Just a little bit. Don't don't put the whole thing in. You just add a little bit of broth or a little bit of water. And that gets all the good flavors up from the bottom of the pan. And without you having to without you having to burn it. But as soon as that water dishes or it dries up a little bit, you could go ahead and move the move the chicken around again. So this could be broth, this could be anything. Just put a little bit in there. Let it come up to a, a nice little simmer. That way you're getting everything off of the bottom of it. And what you're doing is you're also creating a pan gravy with that. That should be bubbling nice. You see that, y'all? This is also locking the flavors in. Y'all told me to t- take my time, but I'm really, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to keep with the time constraints, y'all. You 
You see that when you move it around? You see how it's creating a pan gravy now? <laughs> that that flavor is getting in there. This is what makes it so flavorful. You know what I mean? Wow. Man, if you could smell what I'm smelling right now, you're in you're in heaven. Okay. You let it come up a little bit more. How's everybody doing? Say something. I gotta hear y'all. Jeff, you alive, bro? We just, we, we're just, we're just watching, <laughs> trying to keep up. Claudia. I am figuring it out, man. Claudia, you need uh, to package that and UPS that to my crib. Just remember that, all right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Right about now, I got wifey cooking right now, and then I'm watching you cooking right now. I don't even know which one I want to eat right now. Hey, man. We got you, bro. And it's going to be the thing, so you can do this one next with wifey. And I'll still package it, too. You know, you know I got you. It's my family. Send the drone. You see that, fellas? Yeah. If you want, you can add a little bit more tomato product just to give it a little bit more color. But right now, I like this color. This is not too bad. You can see all the it piece and all the flavors in it and everything. And we're what? We're not even 30 minutes in. So you guys got to see it firsthand how quick we can actually make this happen. I certainly have to rewatch and rewatch and rewatch this video a hundred times for me to get it right. <laughs> I, I think you'll get it faster. Duh. You know, I did it a couple of, I've, I've done it a couple of hundred thousand times, so I'm pretty sure like <laughs> it's not fair. No man, this is great. You know what I mean? Like I'm learning a lot. We can see. Being very transparent, this is my first time. Yo, and this is what it's about, though. You know what I mean? Like, like, they don't show this on TV. We over here learning how to cook together, fellowshipping. That's what Gentleman's Factory is about, y'all. You know what I mean? That's what it is. Absolutely. And let me tell you, this is very impressive. If you have a client or you have, you know what I mean, some parents coming over and they catch you doing this, you lock the deal, bro. You know what I mean? All right. At this point, at this point, you can you can let it simmer for about another three minutes, three to four minutes, and then put it in the pan, or and put it in the oven, or you can let it cook on this. You have to cover it. So in about four or five minutes, depending on the pot that you're using, you can cook this directly on the stove, but you have to cover it. If not, if you want to be like me, because I'm gonna go and do my garnish again. I'm going to go grab my garnish. I'm actually going to take it. Dang. Get a close-up on this. Fellas, look at this. This is crazy. Because this is what you call succulent. Finger looking good, Chef. Licking looking good. good. Finger licking good. This right here, you're going to be licking your fingers for at least a good 15, 20 minutes. Can you zoom in on that? <laughs> How you guys feeling? Good, good. I'm wondering if you did look. Feeling hungry. Claudia, what would you say? Do you prefer chicken broth or water when you... Um, when oh, you always, always chicken broth. Always chicken broth. But because I didn't say to grab it before, I was saying that. The thing is, I don't use a lot of it anyway in this dish but chicken broth is always number one that's an excellent question excellent observation yeah but i like to tell people in advance 
that's what we're doing. You know what I mean? So that they're not like, oh my gosh, I don't have that. And they, nah, you could you you could use a little bit of water. We put so much flavor in this bad boy. You know what I mean? But man, the flavors are just going crazy. And then so remember the garnish that I told you about? What you do is with this is, once you get it, and it's nice like this, you take the garnish that you had cut up earlier, the additional garnish, and then you just put it on like that. Oh, Lord. Wow. That looks amazing. And we just did that. We literally just created this. And then if you want, we pop it in the oven like this. And then it comes out looking like that. Where's the rice? Ah, the, uh, the rice is right. I got the rice right here. <laughs> All right, we'll put it in the box to go. Seven zero one. Then the drones. Claudia, how long did you have it in the oven? Um, I put it in the oven for about forty minutes. Forty minutes at three hundred and twenty-five degrees. You know what I mean? So, fellas, what y'all think, man? Talk to me. I need some questions and answers now. Because that is cool on sauce. It's going to have a nice thick gravy with it. Obviously, if you want to do more gravy, we're going to add more chicken broth or water. Um, but I like it when it's nice and thick. I don't, I don't care for a loose, loose gravy. I don't care for too much. I like a lot of zonia, a lot of onions, and I like a lot of, a lot of thick gravy. But it, just enough to coat each grain of rice or if it's pasta like wraps all around the noodle that's what i like so that's my poulon sauce method and like i said if you're not putting it in the oven you cover it with a tight lid it don't have to be a plastic bag or foil paper like our, our mothers used to do you can just use the lid or yes tighten something over top and let it cook for another 45 minutes this is when i tell people to go and set the table and a lot of times people are like, well, it's done. Isn't the chicken cooked? Yes, it's cooked, but it's not ready yet. And when your mom is like, it's not ready yet, that means everything else in the house needs to be settled. And how long do you know when it's ready? When the, when the dinner table is fully set and everything's good, I guarantee you the chicken is ready. I don't know why it works like that. That's when how you, it works. When you, when you cook it on the stove and you cover it mm -hmm. up, do you lower the temperature or keep it at medium high? You look, no, no, lower it, good question. Lower it to, once you cover it, it's no longer cooking. You're simmering it at that point. It shouldn't be boiling. It shouldn't be doing a loud thunderous roll like we saw earlier. It should literally be the, the you're, you're trapping the heat that's, that, that it's emitting, emitting. You're trapping that heat into that and, and allowing it to just continue to cook. And you'll see it make more gravy. You'll see it, it gets hot and it'll be, it'll be, it's literally compressing the heat in there and causing all the muscle fibers and everything to break. So definitely take it down to a medium low, not medium high to a medium low to low. Yeah. That's dope. How's, every, how's everybody's chicken looking? Shoot. Sure. So far. <laughs> I'm gonna, like a picture, I'm gonna take a picture of mine and, and uh and, I need and a picture it. of everybody. I'm, I'm gonna take a picture and post it. What it looks like for sure. Still working because, on it. But because I, the key is is it's not the first time you're gonna get it, it's doing it over and over is when you really see the benefit of what we're doing. Not to mention now you can skip steps because you made enough empties for two, three portions. And you could do the same thing with fish. You could do the same thing that we did with um you don't want to put it in the pan like that with the fish. You do put it in the pan like that, but you're not going to be moving it around because you don't want it. It's so delicate. You don't want it to break. So you could do it with steak. Oh, my gosh. That same it piece blend. You could add some paprika or add some different things depending on what protein it is. But you'll kill it with that. And that's why I'm like, that it piece, you just made enough. You put it in a jar. Put it in a jar and put it to the side. Now, whenever you're going to cook, What's you bring out your it piece. The it piece is the marinade. Okay. The it piece is the marinade we made. So next time it'll be even quicker for you because you should have enough marinade 
or make the marinade in advance. Mm. That's good. If you make the marinade in advance, you cut so many steps because you already have all your stuff cut and ready to go. And you marinate the chicken, so you know your parents are coming over tomorrow. You marinate the chicken tonight and throw it in the in the in the, in the refrigerator. Same thing I tell people all the time. The biggest thing about food is not the actual cooking of it. The cooking is fast. It's the preparation beforehand, whether it's you making a shopping list before you go out to the store and you gotta make a list or you're gonna grab all the stuff you don't need and none of the stuff you actually need. Making a shopping list before you go to the grocery store and, and consulting with everybody in the house. Hey, what do you think we need? What do you think we need? Getting everything on a list and then you could see what you need to get. Coupon if you need to. Those coupons work, y'all. I know it sounds corny and I'm old. I'm a grandpa. You see my grades? Nah, yo. Those coupons will save your life. You never know. You get buy one, get one. All types of stuff. I used to crack jokes on my mom. Now I'm in the, in the store couponing. Also, this works. That same thing that we're doing with the end piece and everything, you do it with fruits and vegetables. You cut it up uh, on a Sunday, everybody in the house. Hey, hey, honey. Hey, kids. We're doing our prep for the week. Cut up some pineapples, cut up some strawberries, and some, all the veggies and the fruit that you like. Put it in Ziploc freezer bags. Freeze some. Put some in the, in the fridge. When you get up in the morning and you got to run out the house, grab one of those fruit bags. I guarantee you it'll change your life. Grab one of those little veggie packs, little carrot sticks. Come on. Believe it or not, you'll be surprised how it changes your mood, how you're answering to people. And notice, I didn't talk about putting a whole bunch of salt. I didn't talk about putting a whole bunch of of, of adobo and, and, and sazon because those are the things that kill us. And you know, the number one thing I see people use is lorry season salt. And the best way to use lorry season salt, and I want y'all to listen to me very, 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 very clearly right now. You take the lorries, right? You tighten the cap real nice and tight. Then you go to your nearest trash can and you, you can scream Kobe or you could just dunk it like LeBron <laughs> like this. And just dunk it, boom! <laughs> That's the best way to use your lorry, bro. If you want to have some finesse, just hit it with a Kobe. Throw it away. It has been killing us for years. No more lorry season salt. Oh, we make it piece now. Say it with me, it piece. That's it, how you it piece. It. It, thank you. That's it how you marinate it piece. You know what I mean? Real talk. Talk to me. I got a couple more minutes. I want some questions, y'all. Yo, Claudy, so, so, so I'm not Haitian, but my girlfriend is. So if I surprise her with this, oh, I think it's going to be a game. Nah. I think it's gonna Bro, be she's going to think you want to talk to her dad. She's <laughs> going to think that you want to talk to her dad. And when you talk to her dad, that means that you're trying to ask for her hand in marriage. So you got to be careful with this recipe, too. Okay, you know okay. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you you got to be careful. This is a love shop, bro. You want her to fall in love? That's what it is. You, you, at, at, your, at your discretion, you know what I mean? But no, this is a great surprise to answer your question. That, that. And like I said, marinate the chicken the night before, bro. It don't even got to be like you got all this stuff. And then by the time she comes, set up your cutting board with everything. And it's like pop, 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 pop. And it's like, oh my gosh, you, you really just did this. And it took you an hour. But in reality, the chicken done been marinating for a day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ready to fall off the bone. You got all this stuff in front of you. You could cut up one or two things, act like you just did it. Boom. You got your whole meal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, because the prep, that's what takes me the longest because I'm slow. The, the, bro, the, the prep. But the more you do it, the better you, you, you are going to be at it. Mm -hmm. And just guess what? The nice skills that I was talking about in the beginning of the class was, was very purposeful because you're going to be able to blow through a whole bunch of stuff just with those simple techniques. You know what I mean? Instead of, instead of, going to the fridge each time, getting everything ready and in, in your face. You know what I mean? Making sure you can cut everything up, making sure you can um, identify each thing and then putting it in the blender together. That's where, that's where the time consumption is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got a question from uh, Peterson. He asked, uh, can you make a medium rare steak with the epi? Oh my gosh. Yes. The thing about it is it's a marinade. So, you know, you can switch that marinade up. I use like a little steak seasoning in some of my marinade when I'm using my steak, or I'll put a little bit of Old Bay. I'll put a touch of Old Bay if I'm doing it with fish. Still use those same herbs and spices. And what that does is it gives it a pop with that lemon and lime juice and all those fresh herbs and spices. It crushes it. And believe it or not, that's gonna be one of my next recipes is steak. 
So we'll talk about that as well. We'll be doing steak and potatoes. We're going to rock the house with that. You know what I mean? Now, last, um, lastly, I'm going to show you how we go about maybe plating it up. I don't know how long we got, Jeff. No, 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 man. I mean, we have as, I mean, we have as much time as needed, right? You know? All right, cool. Yeah. So um, I want you guys to zoom in on that. I'm going to grab my plate, and then we're going to plate up a little bit. All right, guys? Jeff, how's it looking over there, bro? I look amazing. Well, so I mean, um, <laughs> I, I'm uh, well, thank God for my wife, right? You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Amen. But, 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 I mean, I have been uh, doing pretty well, pretty well. This is extremely helpful. Nice. How's nice. everyone else doing? What does she think about it? She um she is, made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, uh, she assisted to a certain level. Right? <laughs> she assisted. She executive chef. <laughs> she executive chef. Yeah. You the uh, <laughs> you the uh, are you the uh, sous chef? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, bus boy, bus boy, a, maybe. You know, bus boy, chef. <laughs> I'm setting up the table, right? No, um, <laughs> no, like um, we yeah. actually are pretty okay. Good, good, good. Show it how it is in the chat. I will send cool. you my progress on Slack, right? You know. All right, fair, fair. Chef, yeah, should you take a bite of your chicken just to see how it tastes? And see if you need anything more. That's not. You gotta cut into it. You can still pan in. What you said, Chef? I said you gotta cut into the chicken. That's the okay. key. Because guess what? You don't want to necessarily just serve something. Like always taste it, a, to see the sea monkey if it if it's missing anything. But also, uh -huh. you want to make sure that. It's fully done. You can temp it with a thermometer. Chicken should be done at 165 degrees, and it should read that for at least, at least um, 15 seconds. So it's not okay. like a situation where you just. Yeah, I was gonna say break break a piece of the chicken to see the inside. Yeah, see the inside, taste it. You know how we do. I'm not gonna lie, that sauce tastes good though. Not gonna lie. <laughs> yo, yo. I could have told you that. <laughs> I could have told you that. And peace. And peace. Oh, that's the rice? Mm hmm. And you always go for height, gentlemen. You know when you go to the restaurant, you always got to go for the height. Got the sauce on there, got the peppers on there. You know what I mean? That look good. Nice and pretty. We're not playing. We're not playing fair after COVID, yo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're not playing fair after COVID, man. You coming? You coming to the house to gourmet chefs? We're gonna have a fleet of chefs. You know what I mean? Jeff, you see that, Jeff? Jeff, watch, watch Street? Yeah, man. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, that looks amazing. I'm about to take a picture. I've got to put it on my Instagram and tell everybody I made it. <laughs> no doubt. Here, let me get a little, <laughs> get a little view. <laughs> wow. Oh, not, damn, not next to the ramen soup. <laughs> <laughs> now he's just showing yeah. up. <laughs> he's just saying, be Jeff looks like ramen soup. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, it's you, real out here, bro. My feelings, okay? hey, Thank you. It's real, it's real out here, bro. Yo, so I know that view looks nice, man. 
Yeah, yo, thank you, bro. We uh, bless, so, bless, man. We so, bless, bless. So, so question, right? So, so Claudia, I have a question just in terms of presentation. How is yeah. like? How do I get mine to look like that? Even if <laughs> so, even if it doesn't taste like that, but just that presentation, <laughs> so I can put it on the gram, so that people. <laughs> You want to flex for the gram. I think the biggest flex. thing is taking your time. And then, believe it or not, you cook with presentation in mind. You hear what I'm saying? If you start your cooking with the presentation in mind, you're going to know, like I said to you, cut your garnish early. Remember I said, cut a little bit more peppers, a little bit more onions, a little more um, tomatoes. Put it to the side. Because when you're done with your sauce and, and your, your, um, your chicken and your rice, you want to now cascade it over your meal. And you want to build it. Mm. You want to build it with height. You know what I mean? You want to bring it height, center of the plate, nice and tight, and you build it upwards. You eat with your eyes, man. When you see a plate like that come, even if it's a chicken dish, bro, you're like, all right, I'll pay that $30 for that. Mm. You know what I mean? So wait, I'll build it. it. So, so wait, build it, build it with height? What do you mean? Build it. Like when you're building your dish, you don't Ooh. just put one thing one thing, one thing, right? You literally say, I'm gonna build it. I'm gonna start at the base, at the center. I got my rice, I put my rice down, right? That's the base. Then I start to build on top of it. If I'm putting my veggies, then I may put my veggies. Maybe it's, it's hanging over the rice just a little bit, still center of the plate. And then I take my chicken, my protein, and I put it at the top. So now it has height. I build it, not just a side of this, a side of this, mm. and your rice. You're not just dumping it, it's, you gotta have have, have that finesse with it. And then lastly, Ooh, when, you put, when you finish putting the whole, when you finish um, putting everything on the dish and you built it nice height, nice and tight in the middle of the plate, if you want to add a sauce, you can add a sauce. But I always like to garnish it. And the garnish is so good. I love zonia. I love onions. I love my fresh cut onions. Even though there's already onions in the ippies, onions in the sauce, I, I have an extra set of onions and, and parsley and tomatoes, and then I just sprinkle it all over it to make it really have that crunch and that flavor, those textures. Can you show That's us how what it looks about. again? Show us how it looks? Oh, yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah. Can you zoom into that? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, and if you can also take a picture of it to um, show us so that you're like... Oh, that's like, beautiful, bro. Yeah. Thank you, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, man, that's amazing. That's Before, and yeah, we just bro. did that together. We just literally just did it together. So, Chef, what, what would you, is there any, uh, make sure that you can put that before you go up with, you know, a lot of Say it again, I hear a lot of banging. What did you say, brother? No, um, make sure that you take a picture of that so that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we got you. Yeah, for sure. David, um, you had a question. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what would you pair that with? Is there any, is there a certain drink or a certain, like, side of dessert? I would go, I would go white wine. I would go Chardonnay huh. um, if you're drinking wine. I would go Pinot Grigio if that's your thing, because some people are just like, I'm not doing a Chardonnay. Um, I wouldn't go anything. I wouldn't go too sweet. I would definitely keep it kind of drier with the with the Pinot Grigio, um, but a full body Chardonnay works too. Um, I would also say if you're gonna drink something, this is more of a drink if you're doing some sort of like a um, because of the spices and the herbs that we have in it. Um, I, I, I people don't like gin. Um, but uh, like a white drink. I wouldn't go rum, heavy, dark rum. I would go white rum, spice white rum, maybe, mixed drink, mm. um, maybe a gin. I wouldn't do dark rum. I wouldn't do whiskey. I wouldn't do bourbon. You know what I mean? Not with that. Okay, okay cool, cool. What about Malibu? Malibu is rum. Malibu is white rum. It's, it's a fruitier rum. So that, yeah, that Malibu could go with a nice. You just got to, don't make it too, like, too sweet, too, like, like this, you want, you want the, uh, you have so much acidity and it, it, with the tomato and um, you want acidity and all that stuff. So you really kind of want something that has a little bit of a bite. It's not too, too sweet. You want to cut that acidity with that. And the fresh though, mm -hmm. fresh flavors like lemon, lime, orange. You know what I mean? That, mm -hmm. that, that citrusy to kind of well, to help you out with that, balance it. So, so Moscato wouldn't also be good with it, right? At the end of the day, it's your preference. If you really like Moscato, I know, I know some avid Moscato drinkers that would drink Moscato with labu, you know what I mean, with with any kind of soup or whatever. So with cereal, nah, I mean, right? <laughs> with cereal. But no, nah, like it, 
it depends. Like, I wouldn't do like, um, they're just a little more sweeter. So if that's what you like, I'd say do it, but I wouldn't recommend it. That's not, that's not the first recommendation for this. All right, you guys, I want to see some of your plates, y'all. Oh, man. Anybody got a presentation for us? Because uh, we're, we're right about at that time. <laughs> uh, let me, oh, wait, so. <laughs> Jeff was like, let me act if the stuff is ready. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Johnny, let's see yours, man. You've been, looks like you've been, uh, can't keep up. I'll send you a picture. So let me show you what I have so far. I mean, I am a little behind, but uh, you know, I'm working. Yes. Here. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Right. So I'm working. Oh, that looks good. Uh, we're 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 impressed, Miss Lindor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm working here. I'm working. I'm working. <laughs> he was like, he was like, babe, get out the way. Get out. Get out. Get out the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working here. You know what I'm saying? I'm we know who did the work, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know, uh, you know, just seeing how it's gonna taste. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I'm working here. You know. <laughs> but well, uh, fellas, I can't thank you enough. I want to give a shout out to Jeff. Um, man, I seen you. Man, I even remember being on the bridge with you when you proposed. We've been we've been through a lot of stuff, man. I'm so oh, happy man. about the success of, of Gentleman's Factory and Groom Success. And and you have been an intricate part of the growth of the Haitian men and the, and the Caribbean men and everybody, the black men of our community. So thank you. Thank you, Miss Lindor. You know what I mean? Thank you so much for allowing us to have him. I know it's crazy sometimes. Uh, thank you to American Heart Association for always making sure that I have what I need. Um, thank you to my team. Like, obviously, I wasn't holding the camera. You know what I mean? So I have to take care of my team, and I have to shot them out as well. I can't do it without them. They, they, they set me up. They clean up after me, and I'm like the Tasmanian devil. Um, I want to thank all the participants for today. Um, I can't thank y'all enough. Follow me on Instagram, Chef Claudius Maximus. Please okay. hit me up. Share this. Tell people about what we're doing and how we're talking healthy. Um, and the amount of things that we got going on, man. It's a beautiful thing. Check us out on EAT Initiative, E-A-T, Empowerment, Awareness, and Training Initiative.org. That's my nonprofit. That's what we do it for the people, man. We really are, are really, really promoting everything good, everything healthy, everything food, especially for the community. So holla at us. If you're an attorney, if you a judge, you a doctor, lawyer, garbage man, Everybody needs to, a pastor, you know, a, a entrepreneur. Everybody needs to eat healthier. Everybody needs to get better at this. And so um, definitely tune back in. I'm going to be doing some fish recipes. I'm going to be doing some steak recipes. I'm going to have also some other chef friends come through and, sh and, and bless us too. So I could get something to eat from somebody else for once too. You know what I mean? Um, so I just wanted to shout out everybody. If I missed anybody, just know that I love you and I care. Um, my family back home in Brooklyn and in Jersey. So, uh, Jeff, thank you so much for having me, man. It's been a pleasure. No, man. Thank you so much, man. What's your Instagram handle again? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh at okay. Chef Claudius Maximus. At Chef Claudius Maximus. And also at Eat Initiative. E-A-T Initiative. And eatinitiative.org is the website. Okay. Oh, man. Perfect. But, yeah, like, and then lastly, you know, like, I know that you're in um, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but you also travel as well, correct? Yeah, yeah. Like you said, um, I can't believe that was three years ago already. Like yeah, you man. said, I came up, you know, for that uh, healthy eating initiative, and we tag team with the uh, Heart Association. We were able to get the Heart Association to to show us some love and give us some stuff. We also were able to um, partner up with a couple of other ones, like the YMCA is a big partner of ours now. Um, HAC, obviously. Um, so let's uh, let's make things happen, man. Like let's really, really push. Um, to, to do something healthy, especially when outside open back up. Let's do something fun, yeah. maybe something outdoors. Yeah. Um, let's use that rooftop. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. A big demo upstairs, rooftop. I would love, love, I think we'll kill it. DJ music, some libations, and some good healthy food. I think that'll be strong.
do we have any last questions for Claudia before we um, sign up? Hey, just appreciate Claudia Chef, man. Uh, thanks for the all, all the good information and the show, buddy. Thank you. Hey, man. Thank you. <laughs> thanks for being on. Hey, Much you appreciate right it, gentlemen. Holler at me. And, hey, fellas, y'all got my DMs. Y'all got my numbers. Shoot me a text. Don't, I, I love hearing from my brothers, you know, randomly anyway. Um, if I don't pick up, I'll text back. But, yeah, any questions, man? Fish, you know what I mean? Hey, I'm doing this. What do you think goes with it? I've been doing this for over two decades. I mean, I love to share that knowledge, man. It, it doesn't do any good for me to just keep it to myself. You know what I mean? Awesome, 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 man. Claudia, man, thank you so much, man. And then, yeah, like, and then for um, those who participated today, put your progress on the Slack channel so that, uh, so that we all can see who has wives and, uh, and uh, who, <laughs> who, has wives and who don't, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> no, let me stop. Um, yeah, man, but um, Claudia, man, thank you. Thank you um, so much again, man, you know. And then, uh, you know, um, we have um, chefs also at the Gentleman's Factory, man. So, one of the all at me, man. Yeah. Let me know how you guys liked it. Definitely, you know, take the survey at the end of this. If there's a survey, if not, just show me some love, y'all. I would appreciate it and uh, encourage people to follow us and, and see the great things that we're doing. I thank you so much. Um, and we'll look to see you on the next recipe. Oh, for sure, man. Bring it, bring your A game. I'm not playing it next time. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm not taking it easy next time. No, man, definitely. But we'll do, man. Claudia, thank you guys. I was, Thank you so much. And then everyone else, man, bon appetit, you know, and then make sure that you um, share your uh, progress on the uh, Slack channel. So that we have All right. All right. Thank um, you. All right. Thank, thank you, Chef. It's fantastic. Thanks, All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you.